Hi guys, I miss you so much. So it looks like we're gonna be moving into like covering some new material over the next couple of weeks. So I'm gonna be trying this. Y'all are gonna be trying some new stuff. Bear with me. Um, just know that I really miss you. And I hope that we can get back to normal as soon as we can. And we can hopefully finish out this school year strong. Um, first things we left on our dog unit. Um, Paul actually probably worked out as perfectly as it could have. Um, I'm not even going to worry about giving you guys a dog test because it's already been like three weeks since we've even talked about them. So we're not going to worry about it. Um, we're going to move forward into our cat unit. So uh, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, this is going to be the plan for this week. Um, we're going three units, or sorry, not three units, but three classes are going to be today. Um, or this week, I guess I should say. Um, today, y'all are gonna be going over cat breeds. We're gonna start off with short hair cat breeds. Um, next class, we're gonna do long hair cat breeds, and then we're gonna do some stuff on caring for cats. Um, today, we're gonna be doing notes, slides one through 32. And y'all are gonna have an assignment called the History of Cats, which is gonna be posted to Edmoda. Um, the History of Cats assignment is gonna look like this. Um, I give you the link right in here. There is 10 questions that you have to answer using this link. Um, it, you just go through, read it, read the questions. It's not super long honestly there's just a lot of ads in here um you just need to go through and you need to answer the questions and then submit that um that's going to serve as our introduction into the unit and then we are going to start on our cat units so i'm sorry i couldn't bring raisin in he's at home um he's inside and i'm outside so he's gonna hang out in there. Um, first thing, we already covered it, the history of cats assignment on Edmodo. Y'all need to work on that before we start moving in and y'all start taking notes, watching the other, the rest of the lectures so that this is just kind of like a preface to the unit. So going into short hair cat breeds, um, we're gonna go over I think 13 or 14 short haired cat breeds. Um, they're not super commonly known. It's not like dogs, how we know we have like golden retrievers, we've got chihuahuas, we've got all these dog breeds. No one really knows anything about the cat breeds and that's completely fine. Um, it's gonna be new material for most of you guys. So the first one is the Obsidian. Um, the Obsidian comes in three different colors most commonly. You've got the ruddy color, which is what this one right here is. It's kind of this orangey brown color. You're going to have a red one, which is going to be kind of like this reddish brown. And then you're going to have blue, which is actually going to be more of like a gray color. Um, you'll see them darker at the tips of each hair, meaning that if you were to like pull a hair off of them, the hair closest to their body is going to be a lighter color and it's going to get darker towards the tip. The thing about the Obsidian is that they have some pretty big eyes, very round, um, and they're relatively like a skinny cat. They're very, very active. Um, they don't mind water, meaning if you do decide you want to give your cats a bath, this one's probably not going to hate it. Um, they're very intelligent. They're very trainable to the point that they have been known to be taught to retrieve. So you can throw their toy across the room rather than just batting it across the floor like my cats do. Maybe they'll bring it back and you can just kind of continue playing. Um, here's some pictures of the obsidian cats. Here are the different colors that they can come in. Um, picture of a little kitten, which I guess I'm kind of blocking. Um, and there's another picture of what they like look like in real life. So the next one is the American short hair. Um, this one is super common 
and you probably don't even realize it. Just they're so common because they come in 34 different colors and those are just the recognized colors. So essentially every short hair cat that you meet is gonna be an American short hair or a domestic short hair. When you bring in your cat to the vet, if you don't tell them what breed they are and they see that it's a short hair cat, most of the time they're just gonna write DSH for domestic short hair. Because honestly, with 34 different colors, they got a pretty good chance of saying, yeah, this is, this is actually a domestic short hair. Um, the domestic short hairs or the American short hairs, they're a medium to a large size cat. They come in all different patterns. Um, O'Malley, my cat, she's a tabby color. She is an American short hair or a domestic short hair. She doesn't look anything like the cat that's up here on the screen because again, 34 different colors. Um, they, can, they can look like this cat, that one, and again, I am in the way. Um, they can come in tons of different colors. The thing that you're looking for is kind of this like streaking of, or these stripes that you see on the cats, where they've got stripes coming down their forehead, stripes on their cheeks, going around their neck and down their body. Um, this cat has kind of like a cinnamon roll effect, which I thought was really cool. Um, Cause again, 34 different colors y'all. You can see just about any color pattern. The next one is the Bombay. Um, the Bombay, it's a relatively new breed, 1958. It's still older than any of us here. Um, but the Bombay came across by breeding the Burmese and the American Shorthair. So the cat that was just on that last slide and the Burmese, which we're gonna go over soon. Um, the Bombay is relatively recognizable just because it had, there is no color combination with the Bombay. With the Bombay, you're always gonna have a completely black colored cat and these coppery or gold colored eyes. And that's the Bombay. The next one, this is, I always laugh at this cat because it's, so this cat is the British short hair. And honestly, if there were an old man to be a cat, he would probably be a British short hair because I just look at these cheeks and I just laugh. Um, the British short hair is a really old English breed of cats. Um, they can come in different colors, just like the American short hair can, not necessarily as many different colors as the American short hair, but they still come in quite a bit of colors. Um, they're known for being quiet, relaxed, easygoing. They love naps. Um, but the thing that you're gonna see when you look at British short hairs is that they're all gonna have this like chubby cheek kind of appearance. There isn't really much of a neck going on. It's all cheek and jaw. Then we get into the Burmese. Um, when we talked about the Bombay a couple minutes ago, the Burmese was used in the breed, in the crossbreed to get the Bombay. So the Burmese has been around longer than the Bombay has. They've been around since the 1930s. They originated in the 1930s um, in the United States and they're a cross between a Siamese cat and a Burma. The Siamese cat we're gonna end up going over today. Um, the Siamese cat is the cat that was on Lady and the Tramp and they, they always walk around like this and they're really loud and annoying. Um, but the Burmese cat kind of maintains that color pattern, I would call it, of their lighter on their bodies, but they're darker at the tip. So they're darker on the ears, on the feet, they're darker in the face, they're dark on the points. Um, the Burmese did also carry over the Siamese's personality of they can have a sweet disposition, but they can also be very, very bossy. And that's honestly the Siamese to like a T. So we see they're darker at the tips. Um, they've kind of got this pointed face if they're not overfed to the point where they start gaining too much weight. They're darker on the legs, the ears, the face. You can see a little bit on the back. And a lot of them have these greenish gold colored eyes. This cat is also very funny. 
Um, this cat is called the Cornish Rex. Um, the notable thing about this cat is first, it's not a sphinx. So raisin, completely hairless. The Cornish Rex is very, very similar to the sphinx cats in that they don't have a, your typical coat of hair, but they have very, very short hairs all over their body. Um, they have really big ears, large eyes. They're known for being like pretty skinny. Um, a lot of the times when you see cats like the corner shreks or the sphinx, they're going to be very skinny because their body temperature has to be higher because they don't have that hair to protect them from the elements, like if they were to go outside or to try to keep them warm. It's like going out when it's 50 degrees without a coat or long sleeves. It's like if you, if it's 50 degrees and you're outside in a shortened t-shirt, you're going to be cold. Um, so the Cornish Rex doesn't go outside because it doesn't have those hairs, like that jacket, to protect them from the outside. Um, you see the big ears? Yes. It's a funny cat. He's, so this cat's very stretched out, so you can see how skinny they are. They're a big cat, but they also have big ears and, and big eyes. Um, they're not completely hairless. They do, you can see the color pattern on them, and especially on this kitten, you can see the way the hair is shining in the light. They're not hairless. So they're close to the Sphinx, but not quite. They still have a little bit hair. They've got more hair than the Sphinx does, at least. The Devon Rex, also another interesting cat. Um, these cat breeds that we're going over today, outside of like the domestic short hair, sorry, the American short hair, and the British short hair cats, these ones aren't too terribly common. Like you've probably never seen a cat with curly hair until today. Welcome to the Devon Rex. This cat has very, it's not very curly hair, but it's got some like curly, relatively curly hair. Um, they don't, they also don't have very long hair. They're very short hair primarily just because it's like getting a perm when it gets really really curly it gets shorter and it shrinks towards the body so the Devon Rex doesn't seem to have a ton of hair and it's almost got like these waves on it um they like the Devon Rex have these very big wide set ears and some pretty big eyes um when it says it resulted from a domestic cat and a cared for stray cat that just means they don't really know where this cat came from. It wasn't like an intentional crossbreed between one cat breed and another cat breed and let's see what happens. It was somebody's cat bred with a stray and came home with some curly hair babies. And people liked it and they were like, this is, this is interesting. Let's keep trying this. So they continued breeding this curly haired cat to the point that they eventually created like its own breed and it became the Devon Rex. So you can see it's got little curls on its chest, on its arms. Um, they're not very common. The Japanese bobtail. Um, so the Japanese bobtail comes in the calico color, or it can be calico, tortoiseshell, or tricolored. Um, all three of them mean the same thing. They're gonna have some form of black, orange, and white on their body in any kind of pattern. As long as they have those three colors, they can be called any of those three things. Calico, tortoise shell, or tricolored. Um, they're called the bobtail because they literally have a bobtail. They got a nice little nub. Um, it can be called a palm, it can be called a bunny tail, but They've been bred, and it's almost like a genetic defect of where this cat wasn't born with all the little vertebrae in its tail, and people were, again, like, hey, that's cool. Let's keep doing it. Um, the thing, though, is that it's not necessarily super refined, the breeding, so the tail is still really, really sensitive. It's not like this cat was born intentionally, and everything is okay and healthy in regards to its tail is something that people think are really cool and they continue breeding it, but the tail is still very sensitive. The tail was still meant to have all of those vertebrae. And because it doesn't, it's not necessarily as cared for or as protected as it should be. Um, so when you're